Just wave your hands in his presence this morning. Come on, open up your mouth and tell him something wonderful. Fall in love with Jesus over and over again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to be worshiping the Lord with our giving this morning. But before we do so, I'm just going to ask those of you who are here for the very first time. I've forgotten when I did the welcome. I'm here for the very first time. Could you just raise your hand? Do we have any first time visiting friends? We see one person over here. Anybody else? Anybody upstairs for the very first time? Could you stand for us, ma'am? We want to say welcome to you. God bless you. We thank you so much for coming. And we trust that your heart will be richly blessed. And let me also say, if you don't have a church home, then you can make Evangel Tabernacle your place of worship. Put your hands together again for her. And for those of our members who are viewing on the different platforms, we want to say welcome. And we trust that your hearts also will be richly blessed this morning. It's time to sow into the kingdom of God. I'm going to invite you just to lift your offering before the Lord, your tithes and your offering before the Lord as we just thank God for his blessing this morning and trust him that he will indeed continue to bless us. Do I get that or should I pray? Let's just declare as we raise our seed, as we raise our gift before the Lord this morning, let's just declare over our lives together. Hallelujah. Father, because I'm a tither, everybody, and a giver, I thank you for the rights and privileges you have given unto me to decree your word over my life. I therefore decree that I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. I am blessed in the city and in the field. I am blessed in my finances and blessed in the storehouses of my savings. I am blessed to be the lender, not the borrower. I am blessed to be the head and not the tail. And I'm blessed to be above only and not beneath. As I commit my tithes and my offerings to you, I receive the promise of your blessings over my life. I speak your word that no demon in hell shall be able to hinder, delay, or stop your blessings upon my life. And I pray that you would use my tithes and my offerings to help establish your word in the earth realm, cause lives to be delivered and changed, and bring in the harvest of souls to the kingdom of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Now listen, know that there's a lot of us here this morning. We must observe the social distancing. Watch each other, don't bundle, just wait. And watch each other and come, and you put your tithes and you go back, right? No rush. We can even start from the front to the back. But just watch each other and just come orderly and, and bless the Lord with your giving. At this time... I'm going to invite Sister Francis to come. I'm going to invite you just to put your hands together and bless the Lord as she comes and minister to us in song. Come on, a bigger clap, man. Come on, bless the Lord for her. Praise God. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Bless the name of the Lord. This morning I'm here because I love him too much to fail him now. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. When I first heard of Jesus, his love and his grace. My heart was overwhelmed to think a king would take my place. I cried, love. to fail. 
I told him I love him. It was easy to say, but harder to prove when temptations come my way. Amen. A statement of commitment. Can we close our eyes and just say, yes, Lord. That is me, Jesus. That's me in 2022. I love you too much to fail you now. I've made my promise. This is my commitment. I have a covenant. Yes, Lord. I love you too much to fail you now. Come on, put your hands together and give God the praise of the house this morning. 
What a joy for us to be here on this, the first of Sunday morning of another year. It is the day the Lord has made. And we will, we will rejoice and be glad in this day. You know, somebody says that this is the week of the devil's defeat. And we will rejoice and be glad in this week. And this is the month of the Lord's triumph. And we will rejoice and be glad. But hey, this is the year that the Lord may just appear. Can you say, even so come Lord Jesus come. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. It's my joy to greet you on this first Sunday morning of the year. Good seeing the family out today. The writer reminds us, I'm so glad that we are a part of the family of God. We have been washed in his fountain and cleansed by his blood. We are joined here with Jesus. Amen. Joined here with Jesus. So we give him thanks. And yes, you are being made welcome. And for sure, the presence of God is here. Amen. I want to take you back to the text that we have read earlier on. Let me just say how good it is to see Sister Sharon Thomas with us this morning. She lost a grandson recently. We are praying for you, Sister Sharon. Will you stand, Sister Sharon, let everybody see who you are. At times we grow away from each other. We don't know each other much again. But that is Sister Sharon Thomas. She lost her grandson recently. I trust as a family, as a church, that will bear her up and her family in our prayers. Amen. Let us not just pay lip service either, but that we really rally around her, cheer her up and comfort her as best as we can. So for about 30 minutes this morning, you know, I know for sure that those of you who have been a part of church for most of your life or for a number of years of your life, that you know that one of the most important sermon ever preached for the year happens to be the sermon that we preach on the first Sunday of the year. You know, pastors in general, if they have never sought God for a word throughout the year, they always seek God for a word for the first Sunday of the year because that word will always set the pace for where we go throughout the year. And I trust that the word that God has placed in my spirit, in my heart, will be a blessing. And not just a blessing, but it will challenge us. My, my duty as a minister is not really to make you comfortable or basically to get you all excited. But my duty as a minister is to challenge you based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. That when we walk away from here, we walk away with something that it may not feel nice but something that will help us as we go along. Oh, lift your hands and say, speak to me, Jesus. Oh, speak to me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to welcome my sister. Oh, I, I, your name is always not in my mind from time to time. But she's the newest member, or should I say the newest addition to her family. She got baptized about two weeks ago. Come on, will you stand and we just make her welcome, please, two weeks ago. And we are so very happy to have her in church today. Let us encourage her and cheer her along and just to encourage her in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can we read these verses together? Can you start at verse 18, please? We shall go from verse number 18 to verse 22. It declares, And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called, nobody can read, let's start again, let's read together, all right, one, two, three, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. 21. And going on from twins, he saw, two, he saw other two brethren, 
James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, doing what? Mending their nets. And he called them, 22 and last. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Lift your right hand. Father, we come to you broken, need to be encouraged. We come to you sick physically and spiritually, need to be healed. We know that in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, they are pleasures forevermore. We ask, Holy Spirit, for a fresh anointing. An anointing that will break every yoke. An anointing that will give victory and deliverance. An anointing that will bring miracles to our hearts, body, soul, and spirit. An anointing that will cause every yoke and every chain to be broken. An anointing that will cause us to worship you more, to bless you more, and to praise you more. We pray that you'll speak to us today directly. That you'll speak to us today collectively. We pray that we shall not leave from this house today the way that we came. We pray that your word will go forth with power and with great authority and with clarity. Almighty God, to you we give all the glory, the honor, might, and power because you are God. We declare that you are higher than the highest, that you are greater than the greats, and there's none who can ever be compared with thee. You remain the all-time undefeated, undisputed champion. You are indeed our king of all kings. Our Lord of our lords. The Alpha, the Omega. The first and the last. And to you we bow almighty God with worship and praise today. Do what you must do in us for your glory today. In Jesus name and the church say. Amen amen and amen and amen. I want to talk to you or talk to us as a family today. As a church. As we look on what we should be focusing on for the year 2022 and where we should be going as a church. I want to speak to us today on the topic as to how to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. How do I become a disciple of Jesus Christ? The truth is that there are so many of us who want to be apostles. There are so many of us who want to be preachers. There are so many of us who want to be leaders. There are so many of us who want to be evangelists. There are so many of us who want to be who want to be prophets, you name it. But before we can be all of that, we must first be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Are you still here with me this morning? So therefore, how do I become a disciple of Jesus Christ? You know that we have grown up in a day and time when we will tell people, you need to be. But we have not told people how they can be. And therefore, it is believed that 93% of all the converts that we gain as a church and churches in general... We have lost them in the space of 12 to 18 months because we win them, but we can't keep them because not many people want to be disciples, one, and not many people want to be disciples know how to be a disciple. But as we look at the text today and as we look on where we must go, I believe that it must be the dream and the hope and the, the determination of every child of God. That God, if I gain nothing this year, I really want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Because when all is said and done, everything that we gain in this life, in the material world, it will pass away someday. But those who are grounded upon the principles and the teachings and the word of Jesus Christ we are going to stand in the name of Jesus 
So I challenge us to build our hope and our faith and Christ who is the solid rock. You know, one writer declares that all of the ground, they are water, sink and sand. But on Christ, the solid rock, we must stand. And therefore it begs the question, as I said before, how do I become a disciple? I believe that the Spirit of God wants all of us uh, to be. I believe that God wants to take us away from just being spirited and become spiritual. There are far too many of us, we are fired up, uh, but we are not uh, grounded. We know how to shout, uh, but we don't know how to live for God. Are you understanding me? We have seen this in the life of so many people. We clap, we dance, and we shout. Amen. We just want to enjoy the presence and the spirit of the most high God. But we cannot take tribulations. We cannot take testings. We cannot take problems. We cannot take our takes and pain. Because there is no word in us for us to overcome. Are you getting me today, church? So how do I become a disciple of Jesus Christ? And I want to specifically say Jesus Christ. When I sent off the sermon last night, I didn't have those two words or those last three words of Jesus Christ. Because there are so many people who are disciples of others. And there are so many people who can say what others have said. And they even copy the life of others. But they have not copied the life of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are following so many people. But the most important person for us to follow, we are not following him. And that is Jesus Christ. And therefore today, I just don't want to challenge you today. And say how to become a disciple because you can be a disciple of so many other people you can even be a disciple of Michael Grant but if you are not a disciple of Jesus Christ then you are not going to make it to heaven so how do we become that disciple of Jesus Christ I believe that it's important first and foremost to ask before we even ask how do I become a disciple of Jesus Christ that it is important to ask as to who is a disciple. Because if we don't know who is a disciple, it is difficult to become a disciple. Are you getting me today? Now you'll agree, based on many, many commentators and dictionaries, that a disciple is really a learner. A learner, okay? A learner. And in our context, a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. In other words, anybody that you are following and learning from and is committed to is your master. And you have become their disciple. So who is it that you are learning from? Who is it that uh, you are following? Who is it that uh, you are committed to? And that person becomes uh, your master. And if that person becomes your master, then you have become that person's uh, disciple. You know, there are four steps that we will discuss this morning. And hopefully into next week, as we look at our quest as to how to become a, a disciple of Jesus Christ. And these four steps can be found in the text that we have read. Let's go back to the text one more time. Because the text reminds us, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter. And Andrew, his brother. What were they doing? They were going about their business. They were doing what they have done any other day. Casting their net into the sea. And Jesus said unto them, you need to what? come and follow me. And Jesus said, when you do it, I'm going to make you. Hallelujah. You cannot be made into who you want to be unless you are committed to following 
Jesus. Hallelujah. And that does not mean that we follow Jesus only on Sunday morning. But we follow Jesus 24-7, seven, seven days per week, every single month of the year. Jesus said that when you follow me, I will make you fishers of men. And the same day going on from twins, he saw two brethren. Who were they? James, the son of Zebedee. And John, his brother, amen, in a ship or a boat with Zebedee, their father. And what Jesus said to them, follow me. And immediately they did what? They left their net. They left their father. And they follow Jesus. I don't want to go ahead of myself, but this is where it starts. If you are going to be a disciple, you have to follow Jesus. If you are going to be who he will have you to be, you have to follow Jesus. There are far too many of us who are following so many different people, but we are not following Jesus. Amen. We are taking, gossiping, left, right, and center, but not from the word of the living God. And I want to declare today that when we follow him, he will never lead us astray. Oh, the writer declares that in shady green pasture so rich and so sweet my Jesus lead his dear children along somebody bless his name today hallelujah so as I said that there are four steps that we'll discuss this morning and hopefully the next week in our quest as to how to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. How to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. We have read the text. And the text mentioned four of Christ's earliest disciples. Who were they? Peter, his brother Andrew, John, or rather James, and his brother John. You will agree with me that all of these men became what great men of God who Jesus had used to turn the world upside down. And the world is still being impacted because they made a commitment one day to follow Jesus. I want to tell somebody something today. You cannot lose of following Jesus. You may lose from your politicians and from your parents, but you cannot lose when you follow Jesus. Oh, somebody shout a praise in the house today. It was an ordinary day, but their lives had never been the same again. And the world has never been the same again. And they were not immediate apostles. And they were not immediate prophets and preachers. But all that they did was to follow Jesus. If you need your life to impact and to make a difference in 2022, I want to charge and challenge you today to follow Jesus. Oh, somebody praise him today. Hallelujah. So Jesus used them to turn the world upside down. Who were they? Fishermen. Who were they? Uneducated men. Who were they? Men who were just angry at everybody else. Who were they? Some smelly fishermen. And Jesus said, hey, follow me. And I'm going to change you. And you are going to change the world. I believe that there are families that need to be changed. But you need to first start out with Jesus. I believe that there are some changes that are needed at your workplace. But it starts with every man, every woman in this place. And make a commitment. I'm going to follow you, Lord. I've been fighting the battle all my life. But now I hear the voice of Jesus. He said, Come and follow me. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Somebody said, where would I be if Jesus didn't love me? Where would I be if Christ did not care? If Christ had not come, where would I be if Jesus had not sacrificed his life? Oh, but I'm glad. 
I believe that there is greatness in this congregation today. But you are lacking commitment. And there was greatness in Peter. And there was greatness in Andrew. There was greatness in John. And there was greatness in James. But before Jesus came on the scene, the greatness could not manifest. Amen. Your greatness will be seen when you are committed to Jesus. Oh, somebody praise him in the house today. Hallelujah. So as I mentioned before, these men were minding their own business. Living the life that they knew all their lives. But they had an encounter that they committed to a Christ. I believe that the power and the presence of God is here in the house of God today. If you need an encounter that will change your lives for good, Jesus is here. He's still walking in every bench and every chair through every aisle. And he's saying, I want to make you great. I want to anoint you. You are not living your purpose. You believe that you have accomplished some things and you might have been relaxing. But Jesus said, I want to use you to turn the world upside down but you first have to be a disciple oh somebody praise him today you see the world has not been the same since but another question just where and how did these men get started just where and when just where and when just where and when you know, what made these men great? You will agree that uh, what made these men great was that one day while in their boats uh, on the shore of Galilee, that they had an encounter. Amen. And they made a commitment. I will never go back. I'm going to go with Jesus. Amen. There are far too many of us. We have started with Jesus. We have made our New Year's resolution from time to time. But somewhere along the way, we have forgotten our commitment. And therefore, the greatness in us have not been manifested. But I wish we will make a commitment that I'm going to go all the way. I'm gonna go all the way. And there is something on the inside that demons and devils have been keeping down. But I'm gonna go all the way because there is a greatness on the inside. Great men, great men, great men, great men, great men. They decided to go all the way. They did not just go with Jesus when the times were good. But we read about them. They climbed the mountains with Jesus. That's a disciple. There were times when there were storms on the sea. But they were with uh, Jesus. You're not talking to me, church. And there were days when Christ was teaching. And there were no food for them to eat. But they were still with Jesus. I'm talking about if you want to have greatness. If you want to be used by God. You have to go all the way. These men, they went all the way. Are you understanding me? Jesus said, I'm going to go across the sea of Tiberias. And they said, I'm coming. Amen. Amen. When the multitude turned their backs on Christ. And Jesus said to them, will you also go? They said, no. To whom shall we go? Because you have the word of God. What made them great? Is that they did not stick with Jesus when they were fish and bread. But gave up on Christ when there was nothing at all. But they stuck with him. When the Pharisees were cursing Jesus, they stuck with, oh, you're not understanding me. When the Pharisees were rebuking Christ, they stuck with him. I want to say if you are going to see the glory of God, the power of God, the spirit of God in your lives, in your hearts, in our lives, in our hearts. We need to walk with Jesus. Ah, far too many of us, we are half-hearted 
Christians. We are with him when everything is all right. But we are not with him when the going gets tougher. Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, they got the call of God. Amen. In the case, in the case of Peter and Andrew, they left their nets and they followed Jesus. In the case of James and John, they not only left their nets, but they left their daddy in the boat and they said, hey, I'm going to follow you. Just as how Jesus picked out those four men on the sea of Galilee that morning to make them disciples of his, to use them to turn the world upside down. And miracles were wrought, signs and wonders were wrought, the dead were raised, blind eyes were open, people got saved in this particular room this morning on the first Sunday of a new year. And God is picking out some people. He said, I see greatness in you if you'll only follow me. Oh, somebody lift your hands and say, Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. But don't forget that the greatness did not start until they spent over three long years with Jesus. There are far too many of us who are coming to Christ, but we want instant success. There are many of us who are coming to Christ, and we gave Christ a deadline. If you don't bless me by midnight on the 3rd of January, I'm going back to dance. I'm going back to parties. I'm going back to buy lotto, you name it. We need to stick with him. And greatness will come. Greatness will come. I told you that in 1983, when I came to Christ, I had nothing on my feet. I had nothing much on my back. But I stuck with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega. We need to stick with Him. And then miracles will come, blessings will come. And say, Oh, you're not talking to me. We need to stay with uh, Jesus. So the life of a disciple is to be a follower of Jesus. Are you getting me? Somebody that will stick with him in good times uh, and bad times. Somebody that will stick with him uh, when the crowd is saying uh, away with him and give us a uh, Barabbas and somebody that will stick with him when he climbs the mountains, when he goes over valleys, when he crosses seas and rivers, somebody that will stick with Jesus. Right, please let me walk with you, Jesus. Don't leave me alone. Brothers and sisters, the call of God is first for us to be disciples. Jesus did not say, I'm going to make you into apostles, etc. He said, I'm going to make you into fishers of men. But you first have to come after me. Disciples, disciples, disciples. So again, these men became great because they made a commitment to Christ. But the greatness did not surface until years down the road. Hey, get back to your devotional life. Get back to your time of prayer. I am praying, blessed Savior. I'm standing down here by the river. Will you come, Lord Jesus? Have mercy upon me, O oh God. I come to your loving kindness and your tender mercies and blot out my transgression. Even when it is difficult to pray, you need to pray. Even when it's sickness rocking your body, you need to pray because you're birth through principalities and you're breaking through powers and Jesus reminds us that up on this rock I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not, oh somebody talk with me shall not prevail against it you need to stay all the way and stay all the way stay all the way don't give up I remember times in my life when I was breaking a fast and did not know what to eat, 
I remember times in my life uh, when there were functions to attend. Uh, I did not have what to wear. I could not find the fear. I could not find lunch. Uh, but I'm not going to give up on God. Uh, I'm not going to give up on Jesus. Uh, I'm going to stay with him. So brothers and sisters, you know for sure the lives of these men because we have read about them and still reading about them. They became great. The apostle Peter wrote what? Books are two books of the Bible, first and second Peter. The apostle Peter is also responsible for the book of Mark because all the information that John Mark needed to write the gospel of Mark, it was Simon Peter who gave it to him. Why was that possible? It's because he's stuck with Jesus. Oh God, I pray that today will catch the fire of God in our spirit. I pray that today we shall all have an encounter in from the spirit of the living God. An encounter that will turn our lives around for good. An encounter that will send us on our knees. An encounter that will send us back to the word of God. To walk holy, to live holy, to talk holy, to worship the one true God. I pray for an encounter so Peter became great the apostle John wrote five books of the Bible he became great when everybody died amen he was in the spirit on the oil of Patmos amen John said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day I heard a voice from heaven and this is what it says I am the Alpha and the Omega yes we too can be great but it starts with us becoming a disciple of Christ. Staying all the way. Think of John, I said before. He referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He wrote what the book of St. John. The books of 1st, 2nd and 3rd of John. The book of Revelation on the oil of Patmos. Amen. Amen. When Herod wanted to kill him, the angel of God took him away from Herod. Herod said, hey, I'm going to send you to a prison, to an island that nobody else lives. But he said, I was in the spirit. Oh God, somebody praise him today. He was banished, sent away to the island of Patmos. Only animals and birds and reptiles lived there. He had no one to talk to. But he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard the voice of God. Hallelujah. Somebody need to hear the voice of God in this new year. And that will lead to a commitment to God to say, I must be a disciple. 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 You know, Andrew is known for bringing people to Jesus. He became great. We are reading about them. They had become great. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, he spoke a message. Five, three thousand souls got saved. He became great. We read of John and Peter, amen, uh, on, the, the, on, the, on their way to the temple to pray at the gate, beautiful. They came across a man who asked for homes, uh, and they said, no, 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 but look at us, uh, because silver and gold uh, have we none, but such as we have, uh, we shall give to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, rise up! They became great but it started with them becoming disciples of Jesus there are far too many of us we want to be great but we don't want to spend any time with God a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ 
A disciple is somebody who is totally committed to Jesus Christ. A disciple is someone who will always deny himself and take up his cross, his cross and make Jesus his number one priority. A disciple always say, not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. Disciple is someone who is totally committed to Jesus and to his call. A disciple is someone who does what Jesus calls him to do and also to be. We are called by God. There is a greatness in all of us. There is an assignment given to all of us. There is an anointing on our lives. But we need to spend more time in the presence of the living God to learn of him. And then to be. Then to be. Five minutes more. I told you four steps. We have just gone through the introduction. Step number one. Step number one, I'll just do one. So don't worry, pastor, uh, what are you saying? But step number one, you have to be called. Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two sets of brothers and he said, come, follow me. Every single one of us have received that call. Every person who is born again has received that call. What is the call? The call to be a disciple. The call to be a follower of Jesus Christ. None of us who are saved are exempt from that call. But what we do upon receiving the call will determine if we are disciples or not. Are you getting me, church? Because this is where it starts. There must be a call. It does not start with us being a bishop or an evangelist. But it starts with a call to follow Jesus. Where he may lead me, I will go. For I have learned to trust him so. For I remember twice from me that Jesus was slain upon Calvary. The right declares, and Jesus shall lead me in night and day. And Jesus shall lead me all the way. He is the truest friend to me because I remember. Calvary. It starts with a call. It starts with a call. As I said before, if you are a Christian, you have received that call. That is why you are a Christian. You have received that call. You might have received the call 20 years ago. It might be in a bar. It might be on the street. It might be on the sea or the seaside or wherever. But we have received the call. We have received the call. What have we done with that call? You know, picture this. Jesus is still saying, Behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. If any man hears my voice and open the door to me, I will come in. We have received the call. We have received the call. Have you let him in? Have you invited him in? And then when things start going bad, you kick him out and close the door. Is he still in us? Because we have all received the call. You know, in closing, picture this. The disciples were going through their normal business. You know, it was their normal day. They went out at night. They caught a fish. They brought it in. They would have sold it to their customers. And then the boat had to be washed. Then the nets had to be washed. It was their everyday lifestyle. But this day was different. You see, all it takes is one moment to change your life. Just a moment. 
But a lot of times the moment pass us by. What you think? Can we just use the what if? The what if term? What would have happened if Jesus had said, follow me. And those men had their heads down still doing what they thought they were called to do. Mending their nets. If this net is not mended, I will not catch fish tomorrow. If this net is not mended, my family will not be fed tomorrow. If this net is not mended, my bills will not be paid tomorrow. If this net is not mended, my kids will not go to school tomorrow. If this net is not mended, my mortgage will not be paid. If this net is not mended, my rent will not be paid. If this net is not mended, amen, my motor vehicle, my motor vehicle deposit will not be made. What are you saying? I better do this. Greatness will always hear the voice of God. Is there greatness in anybody? A normal day. I've been to church every Sunday. A normal day. But what made the difference is an encounter with divinity. It changes everything. If any man be in Christ is a new creature, old things are. So brothers and sisters, we need to heed the call. The call changed their lives for good. And the call will change our lives for good. Please. Were they tempted to turn back at some stage? Yes, they were. Were they encouraged to stop following Jesus at some stage? Yes, they did. But they continued. And look what we have today. A world that has been changed. A world that has been changed. But the commitment is first to be what? A disciple. So, the first step is the call. The call must be to follow Jesus. The call must be to repentance. The call must be to holiness. The call must be to devotion to God. There is a call. There is a call. Stand with me, everybody. There is a call. In the balcony, stand up, everybody. As you stand, I want you to close your eyes. Jesus, you have called me. Thank you on the outside. I'm so happy that you're a part of this also. Those of you on Zoom, those of you on YouTube, those of you on Facebook, I'm so happy that you're a part of this also. I want on the anointing power of the Spirit of God uh, to remind each of us uh, that there is a call to repentance. Uh, there is a call to follow Jesus. Uh, there is a call to be a learner of the things of Christ. Uh, and there is a call to be a Christian. Uh, there is a call to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, disciple of Jesus. A disciple that will not just go part of the way, but a disciple that will follow him all of the way. All of the way. As we bow in his presence, can we make that coming? Lord, I want to be a follower. I want to be a disciple. God, you know, if he don't use me at this time to do anything at all, what I need more than anything else is to be a disciple. Everybody, will you bow your heads, close your eyes as we lift our hands and hearts of God in worship and commitment to him today. My soul say yes. 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 Where you 
disciple is that we must be called. Jesus echoed a general call. Come unto me. All he that are labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son. This is the call. This is the call. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. The general call, come follow me, and I will make you, oh God. He wants to make somebody greater today. He wants to make some people greater today. They were many fishers of men. There were many fisher folks on the Sea of Galilee that morning. But only four the call went to. And those four abandoned. They put away everything. And they followed him all the way. I believe that God is calling people in this room to be great business people. That is a call. I believe that God is calling people to be great leaders in your community, in your homes. That is a call. I believe that God is calling many to the ministry. And that is a call. Will you follow me? Says Jesus. Can I warn you? 
that making a total commitment to Jesus will change your life forever. Look at the words. Making a total commitment to Jesus will change your life forever. Your life will never be the same. You will have a purpose, a new purpose in life. You will have a reason to get up every morning. You will, you, you, you will see God in a light that you have never seen God before. Only Jesus knows what the future holds if you say yes. As I said before, the first call is a call to repentance. A call to salvation. A call to holiness. A call to follow Jesus. While we take it down, my soul says yes. On the outside, in the balcony, on the ground floor, wherever you are. If you have never answered that call to salvation, is the first call you must answer. You must say yes to Jesus. Peter, James, and John, Andrew, they were not saved, but saying yes, that was salvation. That's when they got converted and went on to become his disciples and went on to be great men who turned the world upside down. You cannot do anything until you have answered the call to salvation. Brothers and sisters, you are here today. Are you saved? If you are not saved, all that you may ask is to lift your hand. I want you to walk from where you're on the, in the balcony on the outside wherever there is a strong call in this building to their call to salvation. Will you say yes? If you say yes, signify that by leaving where you are and come to this altar today. My soul says yes. Yes, yes brother, you are not saved. Come. Yes. yes, my sister, you are not saved. My soul come. Says Yes, Lord. Says yes to your will. Thank you, my, my sister. Come on, you are not yes. saved. It's time, come. It's, time come. It's, time come. it's time to come. It's time to come. It's time to come. It's time to come. In the building, wherever you are, it's time to come. Yes, Abraham, yes. save wherever you are. Will you say yes? Will you say yes? Say yes. Say yes to your Glory to God. Thank you, brother. Somebody else. Keep coming. Keep coming. I say yes. 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 Oh, yes. My God. My God. My God. My soul. Yes. Says yes. Come on. Just spread right across the heart. Just spread right across. My soul. Say yes. Is there somebody else? Somebody else. Somebody else. Yes. Somebody else. You are not saved, it's time My to come. Say yes. Yes. Say yes to your My soul say yes. My soul say yes. 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 My soul says yes. Say yes to your are bowed, the eyes are closed. I want to thank each of you for answering this call. This is where Peter, James, John and Andrew, Philip, Matthew, Bartholomew, you name it. This is where it started for them. All of us who are doing ministry, this is where it started. A call from Jesus to follow him. Hallelujah. Put that song of all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Wherever you are, as we make the altar call for those who need Christ, I want those of you who want to be a follower of Christ. You have been saved, but you have not made that total commitment to follow Jesus, to make that commitment today. I must be a disciple of Christ, a learner, a follower of Jesus. 
and everything that we need to know about him and how to follow him is in the word. We have answered your call. We have gotten out of our boats. We are going to follow. Mm. Hallelujah. Jesus, Come on, let's make that commitment today. Everybody everywhere. Blessed name of your only Son, only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. We come to you on this first Sunday of a brand new year. Thanking you, Almighty God, that it's not because of any good that we have done. We are not worthy. We should and could have been like others who have lost out in the year gone by, passed on into eternity. But God, we believe that there's purpose why you have brought us into an here that you have already created. So Father, we stand grateful. We stand thankful. We stand with gratitude in our hearts saying thank you Lord today we intercede on behalf of these persons who are standing at this altar we know that you are here we know that where you are there is liberty so right now almighty God we pray for freedom in every mind in every heart in every spirit today we pray, God, that they have heeded the call to follow you. By leaving, Almighty God, their seats are where they were. To come standing at this altar. That you will meet with them. That they will not leave this place the way that they came. We pray for transformation as a result of an encounter with you. We pray that you will pull up everything that is inside and fix it the way it ought to be in the name of Jesus. Touch my brother. Touch my sisters. 
These are your children. So God, we break chains and barriers. And we pray that your salvation will be made known, Almighty God, to them. It will come into their hearts and lives and minds, and body, soul, and spirit, in the name of Jesus. We submit, Almighty God, this prayer request to you, knowing that you are more than able to answer and to meet all of these needs. We pray over this congregation, to the many of us who have received you as Lord and Savior, but God, we have not started on that path. We have been a disciple or becoming a disciple. Oh God, because there are so many things in our lives that Almighty God are proven destructive to the call of God on us. Spirit of the living God, convict us right now and let us answer that call to be that disciple. God, you see the many who are just like a Peter, who are just like Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. You saw greatness in those men, and you called. They came. The world has not been the same since. Today, I pray a prayer over this congregation. But God, as a result of us eating the call to be your disciples, our lives will not be the same again. Our homes will not be the same again. Our families will not be the same again. Our places of business and work will not be the same again. Our communities will not be the same again. Our town will not be the same again. Because you have anointed us to be chain breakers. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands, everybody. High surrender, high surrender. High surrender. All. Yes, Lord. I surrender. All. Jesus, in the name, in the name of the Lord. Give me the fourth verse, the fourth verse, the fourth verse, please. Yes, yes, declare it now. What a commitment. Thank you, Jesus. brother my sisters who came forward to Christ today let me just remind you that salvation is as easy as ABC a is that you must admit I am a sinner we're all born in sin and shapen in iniquity David said against thee and thee only have I sinned yes we have all sinned the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is everlasting life. So A, we must admit that we are sinners. B, we must believe that there's nothing that is impossible with your God, with my God, with our God. If your sin is like the mountain, 
God can wash it away. It doesn't matter what. God is able to do it. But see, we must confess. We must confess our sins. If I confess my sins, then he said, he's faithful and just. You see, salvation is conditional. We have to confess. And then God will do what he says he will do. We are prayed over your life today. Yes, we believe the confession is made. You need to walk away from this altar saying, yes, Lord, I am committed. Troubles will come. Yes, temptations will come. Yes, problems will come. But there is no mountain that God cannot take you over. There is no valley that he, cannot, he will not see you through. That's the God that we serve. Through many dangers, toils, and scenarios. But hey, I have already come. He's able to do it. Amen. He is able to do it. So walk away from this altar with that commitment. Peter, James, and John, they walked away from that seashore. I'm going to follow Jesus. Comes what may, I'm going to follow Jesus. If they curse me, I'm going to follow Jesus. They put me out, I'm going to follow Jesus. That commitment must be there. Amen. Be seated for a minute or two. Hallelujah. The persons behind you will take your names, your numbers, that will stay in touch with you. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, God bless you for making Evangel Tabernacle your place of worship for the first Sunday of 2022. The presence of God has been with us. We need to take him home with us. Many a times we leave Jesus at the church. When we get home, all kind of bag and pan. Take Jesus home with you. Let the presence of God flow through your home. Bring you the peace that we need. Let me remind you that later on at um, 5 o'clock we'll do our first Sunday school for this particular year. It starts at 5 and the Zoom link will be sent. But better yet, you know that every first week in each year is a time of consecration, fasting, and prayer for the entire assemblies of God's family. Okay? We will begin this prayer meeting every evening this week at 7.30 at 7.30. However, on Friday night, we're going to have a two hours per meeting that starts at 10 p.m. to midnight. All of this will be on the Zoom platform, not in person. However, this evening, the entire assemblies of God's family meeting on the Zoom platform, okay? So what I'll be doing, and that will be 7.30. It means that we're trying to get as many of our members right across Jamaica to have a national prayer meeting at 7.30 this evening. All right? 7.30 this evening. Means that our churches in Portland, St. Thomas, St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, Trelawney, St. James, you name it. Members are coming together on the Zoom platform for one and a half hour of prayer. I'll be sending that link out on the church group and the different groups. Get on it fast because there are limited space. When it comes on, get on it and mute your microphones, all right? And if you don't know, want nobody to see you, turn off your camera. Because some people and them better lay down. Turn off the camera. Okay, if you don't want anyone to see you, turn it off. Very important that we do so. All right, now, Sunday, we end the week of prayer on Sunday. And that will be another prayer meeting on Zoom, but that will take in just the region. That's Old Darbor Red Ground, Old Darbor Bay, I House, all right? So it will be a time of thanksgiving at that particular time. Let me also ask our hushers to come at this time. You know that we have been doing our promise, faith promise, that we collect an offering from our members. Each year, you have 10 months to pay your commitment. This offering goes towards our missions department where we use back to school, persons are in need, you name it. Over the last few years, we have handed out, or should I say, we have blessed people with hundreds of thousands of dollars because you have given some people, it might be $1,000, some people might be 500 some people might be 20000 based on the needs. This is where we give persons funds from. 
we're going to ask you if you're a visitor, a member, not to leave without taking your, your faith missions giving form. What you do, you take it, you go home, you pray over it. I want to give $1,000 this year. I want to give 10000 I want to give thirty. I want to give five. Whatever you believe you can give towards the missions department of the church, this is it. You write it up. You detach it and bring back the bigger part to us. And you keep the other section to remind you of your commitment. You can pay little by little over 10 months. Let's say you plan to give $10,000. January may want to give a thousand, February a thousand, but hey, it's amazing how many people in the wider areas have been blessed because of missions giving. The new vision children's home of those 30 plus children are blessed every month because you have given to this. There are homes that we have repaired because you have given to this. There are care packages that we have done because you have given to this. You name it, children going back to school because you have given to this. We are all in this thing together. So please, take one from Beacon. Brian will be at the door before you go. All right? Brother Wright, can I have this final prayer as we go? From here on, this is a prayer that we're praying every Sunday morning. Stand with me, please. Father, help us to mean every single word that we shall be praying at this time. Look at it. One second. A couple of seconds. Three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, seven seconds, nine seconds, ten seconds. Let's pray this prayer today after three. One, two, three. Father, help us to be the people and the church you have called us to be. A people that will love and worship you with all of our hearts. A people that will always build up each other and never tear down. A people who will always encourage each other and never discourage. A people and a church who will take the message of hope everywhere we go and to everyone we meet in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Bless you, everybody. See you this evening at 5 for Sunday School, 730 National Prayer Meeting. Zoom platform, we love you. Go the blessings and the grace of God. Sister.